Good morning, Year 11. This is a lesson about the nervous system. It's going to be in two parts and you'll be able to pause it. That was Duran Duran, the reflex, just to give you a little bit of stimulus information about what the video is about. So we're looking at the nervous system. I'd also like you to look at this video about newborn reflexes. It's a good idea for you to have a list of reflexes in your bank so that if you get asked to give an example, you've got one. We're also going to look at specialised cells. If you remember, you did specialised cells in B1 and you would have completed a sheet like this. So there are specific cells that you need to know how they are adapted to their function. So it's a bit of retrieval. So you've got a root hair cell. So it doesn't have any chloroplasts because it's underground and there's no sunlight there. And it has a large surface area to be able to absorb more water. Then we've got xylem cells. These are plant cells. They are long and thin tubes and they transport water. It only goes in one direction and they have thick walls to provide support. Phloem cells, also in a plant, they transport sugars, but this moves in both directions. They're also long and thin like tubes and they have sieve plates at the end of them. Sperm cells, you should know by now, they have got a tail to swim to the egg. They have got enzymes in their head, which is an, called an acrosome, which breaks down the jelly coat. And then there's a the muscle cell, which is long and thin to be able to contract and relax like an elastic band. And then a nerve cell. So the nerve cell is long and thin to transmit electrical impulses. And it has a fatty sheath around it, around the axon part of it, which you're going to look at in more detail. And that ensures impulses are discrete. And what that means is that they don't move out to other impulses and the impulse continues to go along the direction it's meant to go. So we'll also call these neurons. You can call them neurons or neurons. Either way is fine. So we're going to look at the nervous system. This is what your spec requires you to know, so you can pause on that later on for revision. So first of all, we're going to look at the central nervous system, or the CNS. And the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, and you'll need to know that. You've got several nervous systems that you don't need to know about. There's the autonomic nervous system, which consists of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, and a peripheral nervous system, which is the nerves on the outside. But you just need to know about the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. So this is a neuron and it is adapted to its function. So there's a bit more information there. So you can draw this down, make a revision card out of it. So you can see it's got a nucleus in the middle, which is where the genetic information is or the DNA and it controls the cell's activities. It's also got a cell membrane, which will be semi-permeable which allows substances to move in and out of. It's got cytoplasm where the chemical reactions occur. So the typical animal cell structures. It will also have mitochondria. They aren't on this diagram, but it will have mitochondria because it will need energy at some point, which mitochondria are the site of respiration. It has this long, thin extension called an axon, which is the darker orange bit through the middle. So you can see that it is long and thin, like what? That axon is covered with these sausage-like shapes and what they, they're a bit like is um, an outer coating. But that outer coating isn't at the precise points where those sausages look to be divided up. So it's not an insulation like a wire that goes all the way along it. It's in sections. So the points where they end, there's actually no insulation there and it allows the electrical impulse to move very quickly along it so it doesn't have to go along the whole length and it's got a fatty sheath which acts as an electrical insulator so it keeps the nerve impulse discreet and going in the right direction and doesn't allow it to spread out to other neurons but it also makes it move faster and then it's got branched nerve endings or dendrites and what they do is allow it to connect with other neurons so they connect together in a big network. You should remember probably from nursery primary school that you've got five senses. Sometimes you forget about these. You forget that you have this core information that you 
you just take for granted that you know. So you've got five senses and I've highlighted them there. Well, your sense organs are the ears, the skin, the tongue, the nose and the eyes. And they're your five senses. And attached to them, what I've done is I've shown you what all the receptors are. So each one of your sense organs has got receptors. So if you look at the eye, for example, you've got light receptors at the back of your eye, which detect light. So a receptor detects a change in the environment. So if the light changes, your eye will be able to detect that. And they're on the retina and they're sensitive to light. So your ears, they've got sound receptors which are sensitive to sound. And so if they receive that information, they'll be able to send that information along neurons to your brain. So what I'd like you to do first of all is to formulate a table that has the sense organs in one column and the receptors that go with it in the other column because you're going to need to know all these receptors. I'm going to give you information in little bits to start off with and it's going to seem like lots of information and it's going to be very overwhelming and it's going to be you're going to be thinking that you're not going to remember it all in a couple of lessons time it'll be second nature and it'll feel like you've always known it so if you just do it in small tasks so the first task is to do a table of the sense organs and the receptors you've got three types of neurons you have um, the first one is called a sensory neuron. Okay, so the first one is a sensory neuron. So I'm going to add an E to the end of my spelling. You don't need to. You can call them neurons or neurons. So a sensory neuron, and that's why it says S there. So this is how you're going to remember the different types of neurons. Storm. So... I'm just going to copy this text box because I've not got my pen right next to me. The next one is called a relay neuron. And the next one is called a motor neuron. OK, there might be a slight glitch because I just got interrupted. So the third one is the motor neuron. So these are all types of nerve cells. So they will all be structured and function the same way as we've just explained when we were looking at this one. Apart from you can see that the relay neuron has its cell body in the middle. Don't worry too much about that. So what you need to know about a sensory neuron is that it's always connected to a receptor. So we've just looked at receptors. So once you've got a receptor, so in your eye where you've got a light receptor on your retina, that will be connected to a sensory neuron. And a bundle of sensory neurons is called a nerve. And so you're probably familiar that you have an optic nerve at the back of your eye. It's always connected to a re relay neuron. I'm going to remove that second S. Right, the relay neuron, you can probably guess what this is. So it's always connected to a sensory neuron. Spell that right. And it's always connected to a motor neuron. So sometimes called interneurons. So it connects the two together. And then a motor neuron is always connected to a relay neuron. And it's always connected to an effector, which you don't know what that is yet, so don't worry. So three types of neurons that you need to know. You're going to remember them by storm, and they're the specific information that you need to know about them. So I'm going to just introduce this reflex arc before I stop the video and then I'll do part two next because you'll have some tasks that you need to do. So you need to make notes on the previous slide of what the neurons do in the separate section. You can make revision cards at the same time if you want. So on the board is a diagram and it sometimes confuses people. 
So I'm going to see if this other diagram shows it better for you. I'm not sure that it's going to help. So I might have to put something on there. You can see this diagram pops up though. So this part around here that I'm highlighting, it's a section from your spine. So if I had chopped a person in half and I was looking at a bird's eye view along them, this would be a section of their vertebrae. So as you can see labelled on this one, it's got the grey matter in the middle which is, and the, the spinal cord is running through it and it's got the white matter on the outside. And then the spine protects it. So part of your spine's job is to protect your spinal cord, which is part of the central nervous system along with the brain. So this bit here is a section of the spinal cord if I was looking down on top of it. So you have five sections of a reflex and that's what this diagram is showing. So first of all, you need to know what reflexes are. You'll, you'll use this term all the time. Um, they are automatic and rapid. So they don't involve the conscious part of the brain. So a reflex that I can give you an example of is if I picked up a hot object, I would let go of it instantly. And that's because of my reflexes, because it, and I can't think about that, because if I think, oh, this plate is hot, I should think about dropping it. I might have already burnt myself at that point. So it has to be automatic. I have to be able to do it without consciously thinking of it. And it needs to be quick before I cause any damage. So reflexes are automatic and rapid and they don't involve the conscious part of the brain. They can involve the brain, but not the conscious part. It means that you don't have to think about them. OK, so they have certain sections. I'm just going to copy my text box in again. So they all start with a receptor, which is what A is representing. And then, whoops, put that back. And then they are connected to a sensory neuron. But the next part of them, so that's a sensory, a sensory neuron. And then a relay neuron. And then a motor neuron. Motor means movement, so that should help because they always connect to muscles or glands, but we'll cover that in a bit. And then they're connected to an effector, which I've just mentioned. Now, the next tricky bit is you need to be able to talk about components in a reflex arc, which is slightly different to what I've just told you. So there is a receptor, which is A. But before that, we have a stimulus. So you, in a reflex arc, you have a stimulus, which is a change in the environment. You have a receptor and then you have a coordinator. And the coordinator is like the central processor. So that will be your central nervous system. So it will either be the brain or the spinal cord. So the coordinator includes B, C and D because they're the neurons involved in the coordination. Then you have an effector, and then you have a response. So the effector brings about the response. It's always a muscle or a gland, and the response is what happens. So these five words you need to know, because they are a reflex arc, and they are the components in a reflex. But you'll often be given a diagram like this one, where you have to label the, the facets of it. So at the moment it's going to seem very confusing but as I've said it will suddenly become second nature. So the final slide I'm going to talk about is about effectors. So one of the things that you need to know about effectors is they are either muscles or they are endocrine glands. So we're going to move on to the endocrine system afterwards. So I'm just going to point out that they are glands. Glands release hormones. Endocrine glands release hormones. Muscles, you know that they're responsible for contracting and relaxing.